Some big changes happened over the summer for Marvel's Wolverine. Specifically, the game's creative director has completely exited the game over what we are hearing are, quote, creative decisions around the game. Roll this up over at thatparkplace.com. You can find the link in the description below. You can also find a link to become a member and join the channel and help me continue to expose woke ideology in video games and entertainment at large and help eradicate this from our society. So this is what we are hearing. Brian Horton, the former creative director for Insomniac Games' Marvel's Wolverine, is no longer part of the project and has moved on to become the creative director for Xbox's upcoming Perfect Dark game. This is according to Steven Totillo at GameFile. Horton left Marvel's Wolverine over the summer after being with the project since 2021. With Horton out, Insomniac replaced him with Marcus Smith as the creative director. Mike Daly is the new game director. Cameron Christian, who was previously serving as a game director, will remain at Insomniac, but in a different role. Totillo claims these moves, quote, are the result of creative decisions around the game. So uh, that is basically the news update. Not a lot to go on, but what I found really interesting is the timing of these decisions, because we do know that Sweet Baby Inc. defender Mary Kenny, who was an associate narrative director working on Marvel's Wolverine, announced she left the project and joined CD Projekt Red. Around the same time, we're hearing that Horton left the game as well. So Kenny posted on LinkedIn back in early July, without further ado, it's time to announce my new job. Today was my first day as a senior writer at CD Projekt Red, best known for the Witcher series and Cyberpunk 2077. I can't wait to talk more about my project. I'm thrilled to be getting back into RPGs, and my team is talented, welcoming, and just flat out cool. Here's to a new adventure. Obviously, she would post a uh, another post later on indicating that she's working on the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel. But she left around the same time that we're hearing that Brian Horton also left the project or exited the project, whether he was removed, whether he chose to leave uh, by himself. It is interesting that this was at the same time that Mary Kenny also left. And not only is Mary Kenny a Sweet Baby Ink Defender, uh, but she is the uh, narr associate narrative director that was literally calling for uh, basically pulling every lever to push LGBTQ plus themes in video games. She said that in an interview with Dual Shockers. Uh, she said she was bemoaning the lack of uh, she was responding to a glad report bemoaning the lack of lgbtq plus characters in video games and she said the glad report tells us something key games are a way for lgbtq people to socialize but it also tells us something heartbreaking that lgbtq gamers don't feel that developers are thinking of them when they design games there are so many lgbtq developers and we want what players want to design experiences that tell the player we're here we're important and we belong and then she, in order to obtain this, she said, we need to pull every lever we have, characters, community, support, mechanics, to make it so. So uh, that is how absolutely radical Mary Kenny is. Clearly, she was probably doing this in Marvel's Wolverine. She's clearly going to be doing it in the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel over at CD Projekt Red. But the fact that she left in July or around July, around that summertime that we're hearing that Brian Horton left, Indicates to me, maybe, maybe there are some huge changes uh, coming to this game in its creative development, and they are completely maybe redoing it. Remember, this game also had massive leaks earlier this year. We saw some character designs for Jean Grey. It also looked like you were basically going to be playing Jean Grey for a significant amount of time rather than Wolverine in a game called Marvel's Wolverine. So it looked like it might be having some of that MCU agenda injected into it that uh, Marvel is infamous for. Uh, what I also found interesting too is this came this this news piece comes in the wake of Insomniac Games, Marvel Games announcing that they would not be creating any more story content for Marvel's Spider-Man Two after that game sales were fifty percent worse than the original game. So they announced this in a post uh, on Marvel.com a little bit earlier. I guess it was October now because we're in November. 
But they said this, while we have no additional story content planned for Marvel Spider-Man 2, we're delighted to bring all of our previously released post-launch content to the PC version, including new game plus, new suits and color variants, photo mode features, and more. So they said they were not doing any more story content for Marvel Spider-Man 2 when they were announcing that it was coming to PC. So as I said, sold less than half less than half of the original Marvel Spider-Man. We know this because they told us this. They said it only sold around a little over 11 million units. They did this in a uh, financial report here. You can see the uh, slide on your on your screen. Uh, it says 11 million units for Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Uh, we know that the first Spider-Man sold over 22 million units according to a leak that was shared to Reset Era earlier. Uh, I guess it was at the end of 2023, so about a year ago. Uh, you can see there 22.685 million units at the end of 2023 had net sales of 827 million dollars uh we, we can, you can also see that marvel spider-man M miles morales it sold 11.125 million copies and had net sales totaling 427 million so marvel spider-man 2 only sold about what spider-man miles morales sold and only half of what marvel's spider-man sold so uh, that i think is not good uh, you're expecting that your direct sequel to be better, I think, than the uh, first game, or at least around the same, not not half, not half, not less than half. That's not good. So I'm wondering if uh, Sony over there is actually making some changes to this game. We also know that Sweet Baby Inc. worked on this game too, right? They announced this in uh, September 2021. Thwip. And also Snicked, so excited and grateful to say we're part of the teams bringing Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine to life with the amazing folks at Insomniac Games. It's been a truly marvelous experience. So with the game director out, with, with him leaving at the same time that Mary Kenny left, maybe they're making massive creative changes to this game, given the fact that Sweet Baby Inc. worked on it, given the fact that Marvel Spider-Man 2 was terrible uh, in, in sales. Compared comparatively to the first game, obviously 11 million is really good sales. But when you're comparing it to a game that did uh, what 22.6 million, half of that, I, I'd say that's disappointing. I would say that's disappointing. You would, I, I would think you would at least want the same, if not higher, for a video game sequel. Uh, you usually do see that, right? Usually the sequels, even if you look at movies and things like that, the sequels usually do perform better at the box office. You can look at Guardians of the Galaxy. You can look at Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, et cetera. Obviously, uh, once you get a little bit further on, when you look at Quantumania, obviously not as good as uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, et cetera. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, not as good as Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But usually the sequels do indeed perform better at the box office, especially when we're looking at uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So... Uh, I'm wondering if they are making massive, massive creative changes to this game with the game director out, getting a new getting a new game director, seemingly getting all new uh, creative leadership. Remember, Sony is going through a lot of turmoil right now as well. They literally just shut down Firewalk Studios after the absolute bomb of Concord. Shut that, shut that entire developer down two months after they shut the game down. That only lasted two weeks. It was only in release for two weeks. So I'm wondering if there's massive, massive changes happening at Sony. We know that they had big layoffs at uh, Bungie earlier this year as well. They had also had layoffs at Insomniac that they announced. So could be some big changes at work at Sony. We shall see. Uh, I think it would behoove them if they are making huge changes, especially to the content of the game, and they are kind of maybe excising a lot of the woke ideology that was likely injected by Mary Kenny and the people over at Sweet Baby Inc. They should publicly announce that because I think that would do them a massive, massive favor to get goodwill from gamers who might actually give the game a chance rather than completely just boycotting it because they see Sweet Baby Inc., because they see Mary Kenny, because they've already kind of seen what you did to the character design of Jean Grey based on a lot of that leaked information. Or I guess it was hacked or whatever. I don't know how, how it came out to the public, but it was obviously uh, came out to the public and it did not look very good at all. So maybe I'll be an optimist here. Maybe I'll be an optimist here, but a lot of these changes to me do seem to add up that there are big, big changes happening here to marvel's wolverine we shall see though we shall see uh what happens with this game we will be following it 
I know that there's also some more information that Endymion says that he's hearing about this game, which does not sound good. Uh, he had a post on X basically saying that they replaced Wolverine with X-23 at the end of the game to basically set up as her taking over. And uh, that's what the that's all MCU crap right there. Uh, and it's an absolute disaster. So maybe they're changing that as well. That sounds like Sweet Baby Inc. all over. That sounds like Marvel Games all over. That sounds like Marvel Studios. So we shall see. Uh, what happens with this game? Uh, definitely one to keep our eyes on. But let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, and to always, always speak the truth.